Prisker's choice that it would be you. Um, in the last few months, you have definitely continued your campaign, um, promised to be to remain in touch with your constituents. And so far, how has that been going? As state representative, yeah, or state representative. So, sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so as state representative, one of the things that I've talked about from not just from my campaign, but as a state representative is how important it is to ensure that the community is as involved and engaged as possible. And um, so I love knocking on doors and talking to people. That was one of the things that I loved about my campaign, even though it was a lot of work. It was something that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed going to someone's home, having them say, hey, come on in and have a seat in my living room and let me tell you about our community. Let, let me tell you and share stories about, you know, um, the things that I remember about our community. Our family has been here for 50 years. Here are some things we'd like to see. Those were all things that inspired me as, um, as a state representative and continue to do so. So after being sworn in in January, I continued most weekends to knock on doors and to listen to the residents because, you know, as I've said to so many of them over and over again, I cannot represent people if I'm not listening to people and hearing their concerns directly. So I love it. And so that's one part of being a state representative. The other part, of course, is being in Springfield and um, meeting with advocates, meeting with organizers, um, and filing bills. So I filed um, over 25 bills actually this first uh, session. Um, so I was very um, ambitious um, because these were all things that I knew were really important. And one of the things that I learned during my time in Springfield was um, there's a process to going from a bill to a law. And, you know, I've known that process, but it's different. You know, you learn it in school or you learn from Schoolhouse Rock or whatever. But it's different when you are there and, and sort of see that process and how much it uh, requires you to build relationships um, with those that are advocating around an issue, with, um, with my fellow colleagues in the state legislature. Uh, and that process, again, was just, I, I love that process. I love the idea that you see an idea, something that needs to happen, you see a problem, and the way you can solve that problem is by changing the law. So, you know, everything does not move forward. You know, out of the 25 that were filed, which was also very ambitious again, um, I think there were nine that ended up being, heading to the governor's desk, eight or nine that headed to the governor's desk and starting to see those get signed now. The two were signed into law yesterday and it's just been exciting. Your background as an attorney, um, you've had experience in the county level um, government as well as dealing with different organizations. You're a resident of Bronzeville. Throughout that time that you were running for this position, there was a lot of controversy surrounded around this particular district and the fact that it was the highest campaign cost in the state of Illinois in this particular type of seat. A lot was in, on stake. Do you feel that because of how that, that campaign went with the backing that you had, not only the political backing, but also the constituents. It seems like voters came together with this same cause of, hey, this is a very serious issue with child care cuts. This is a very serious issue with senior assistance programs. And it seemed like you were sort of like that advocate poster child of, with us doing this together, this is what we can do. If you all really move forward in an electoral process as far as voting is concerned. Um, do you feel this was one of the reasons that you were selected as J.B. Prisker's running mate? Yeah, well, I think that, first of all, there I'm so excited to have been um, asked by J.B. to join him on this team. I mean, I uh, very much believe in um, his leadership ability. I believe that he is the one that's going to help steer our state in the right direction after the failed leadership of Governor Rauner. Um, he and I have gotten to know each other, uh, you know, over these last several months, and um, we are just so 
um, in sync on so many issues and some of them are the ones that you just mentioned in terms of early childhood education. You know that JB was certainly a leader in early childhood education and that's a priority of his, um, you know, and he helped to make sure that uh, uh, he worked on getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of children to, to get breakfast, or, you know, low income families and children to get breakfast and he recognizes why having a good start early on in life is important and that's something that's important to me as well early childhood education JB also is focused on criminal justice reform and was a huge um, supporter and has worked with the Center on wrongful convictions and as you know criminal and juvenile justice reform is something that has been very important to me many of the bills that I worked to pass this first session related to criminal and juvenile justice reform so all of the you know there, there are many ways that you know he believes in economic development and 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 um, you know creating jobs and investing in communities those are things that are important so we just saw so many points that were just um, like I said in sync or in alignment for the most part and so that's one of the things that I think that we saw that why this could be a great partnership. Um, but I think you're absolutely right. I mean, those issues that, that related to seniors and related to children, those were issues that were really important in my campaign for state representative. And um, they're issues that continue to be important to me as a legislator. Um, I served on five different committees in higher education, the criminal judiciary, judiciary criminal um, committee, um, mental health, aging, economic justice. Those are the committees that I serve on in Springfield and they were selected because those were the kinds of issues that I heard the residents of the 5th District talking about. So um, this is a great opportunity running uh, as JB's running mate um, for lieutenant governor to even expand the reach. You know, it's really important within the district, but now this is an opportunity to have even a greater impact um, across the state of Illinois. Did it come across your mind that being a junior state rep would hinder your ability to be a running mate so early into your term? Did that cross your mind that maybe I'm not quite ready, but I'm going to go ahead because of the same similar beliefs? that I have with Mr. Prisker. Yeah, I, I didn't think of it as not being ready. I mean, I've been in public service for over 20 years, you know, in different levels, as you've referenced. I've been at the city level, at the county level, now at the state level. Um, I went down to Springfield because I really wanted to be a strong advocate for the 5th District and for the state of Illinois because we are state representatives. Every law affects the entire state. So I went to Springfield because I knew that I had a passion and I wanted to work hard for the residents of not just the district but for the state. Uh, I wanted to be effective in this role and having this, you know, nine bills head to the governor's desk and many of them having been signed into law, I think five have been signed into law already, um, you know, I think it was just indicative of, 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 you know, being a person that takes this role of public service um, and being a public servant very seriously. So I, I see it as, you know, I had been doing work in my own community throughout my career. Um, as a state representative, I brought in that to the communities of the 5th District, and I just saw this as a unique opportunity to broaden it even further, to say that for the state of Illinois, you know, um, I want to play any role that I can as the advocate and problem solver that I've been my entire career. Um, and then I, I think the other thing that I'll just mention is how important it is um, to really stand up against a governor who is really, you know, having been down to Springfield, I see firsthand his efforts to be an obstructionist and to really uh, destroy our state. And, you know, he has his own personal agenda. His agenda does not include doing what's best for our communities. And so um, I'm really motivated by the fact that, um, you know, I could join up with someone like JB, who I believe brings the vision, brings the, the leadership ability, brings the ability to get things done, because we've been stuck in Illinois for the last two and a half years under Governor Rauner's failed leadership. What do you consider your strong points for those that may not be familiar with you, because you're very familiar within 
Cook County, and because of the fact of such a strong and highly profile election that you were involved with, but to outside of Cook County and to those other constituents in Illinois that represent Kankakee and Will and DuPage and further down state, what are some of your strong points that you can explain to them on why they should have an open mind in considering you for Lieutenant Governor? Sure. Well, I think I'd start by just, you know, I, I think about that question sort of in terms of how I'd introduce myself to the rest of the state. And I, you know, I think the first thing is, is that understanding that, you know, I'm a mom, a mom of three daughters, um, children who have gone through the public school system, who I've always wanted to have a great start in life, much like every parent throughout the state. Um, uh, children that you know I wanted to make sure would be able to continue on if they wanted to go to, through a institution of higher education how to how to get them to get to that place of having that opportunity much like parents around the state um, I'm someone who um, lives in the city um, but just like many other uh, areas throughout the state you know public safety is always something that's of concern certainly as a parent but even personally so, you know, I think on the front end, I would just say, you know what, I have experienced, you know, as a lifelong Illinois and many of the same issues and concerns that other residents around the state have experienced. And, and I cared for my mother who had Alzheimer's and, you know, um, recognized the need for her to have access to health care and what it